If you want the best possible VR experience, but you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a PC VR setup, then I'm sure that you've been looking very closely at PlayStation 5's all new PSVR 2 headset. This video is not sponsored. I used my own money to purchase both of these, as well as every accessory they have to offer so that you can make sure that you're getting the most ultimate VR experience and making the best possible decision with your hard earned money. I'm going to give you my honest and unbiased firsthand impressions, unboxing, setup, and plenty of gameplay pros and cons, as well as give you my full review of the PlayStation 5, the PSVR 2, DualSense Edge wireless controller and DualSense charging station, the Logitech G923 racing wheel, HD camera, comparing PlayStation's Pulse 3D wireless headphones with Sony H3, H7, and H9 gaming headsets, as well as the earbuds that come with the PSVR 2, and popular third-party accessories like the PSVR 2 charging stand and the all-in-one PS5 and PSVR 2 multifunctional cooling charging stand. And lastly, to protect your entire entertainment investment, a PSVR 2 silicone cover and waterproof carrying case. I'm also going to be talking about how it compares to the MetaQuest 2 and the MetaQuest Pro. All right, first, before we get into the PSVR 2, let's go ahead and unbox the PS5 for those of you who don't yet have one. If you follow this channel, you may have already seen my older PS5 video that I did several years ago. Don't you worry, this is not a repeat of anything in that video. And then we've got PlayStation's pretty comfortable and super advanced controller, but not nearly as advanced as that DualSense Edge controller. And we're gonna compare that to this here in a sec. And then we've got the stand for your PlayStation 5. And then we've got your very necessary HDMI cable. Feels like Christmas all over again. So real quick on the front, we've got your USB-A and USB-C and then your eject button at the bottom if you got the disc version. If you got the digital version, it won't have that. And then your power button. And then on the back, we've got two more USB-As, an ethernet port, your HDMI, and your power port. Next up, the PS5 HD camera. It's got full 1080p HD capture, background removal tools, and a built-in stand. That kind of looks like Wally. Eva. So fast forward several days into the future after doing some extensive testing on this camera, I would definitely say that it's subpar compared to what I'm used to. The background removal tools were pretty poor as well, despite the depth information that you're supposedly getting from these two cameras. And as you can see here, even with a green screen, it still did not do a good job keying that out. Next up, the PlayStation Media Remote. Now, was it worth the $30 that I paid for it? I was pretty impressed with how quick and easy the setup process was. And the functionality of the remote itself proved to be pretty useful as well. If you plan to be doing a lot of streaming media on your PlayStation or VR headset, then this is a no-brainer. Watching videos was really cool on the PSVR 2 headset. Even though it was technically a flat projected image, it gave the effect of a massive 200-inch TV screen. Overall, it was pretty nice to be able to turn my TV on and off, control the volume, do voice commands, and pretty much everything else that I needed to do on my PS5 with one hand. The only thing that I wish they did better was to have the buttons protrude just a little bit further. Some of the buttons were so flush to the remote that it was kind of hard to distinguish them from each other in the dark. Next up, the cream of the crop super advanced DualSense Edge wireless controller. You can see on the back it highlights some of the features. It's got ultra customizable controls where you can play with remappable buttons, tunable triggers and sticks, changeable stick caps, and then you've got mappable back buttons. And it of course also includes all of the same same features from the DualSense Edge wireless controller with haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. And then you've also got the option for replaceable stick modules. Sold separately, unfortunately. Ooh, fancy. It comes in this nice little hard capsule case. Whoa. Before we take a look at all that goodness, let's go ahead and see what else is in the box. Looks like just a DualSense Edge instruction manual. So after a lot of gaming with this controller in several different categories, I can safely say that this will likely only appeal to a very small fraction of the gaming community. Customizations and button swaps were nice, but it really didn't enhance my gaming experience that much. And the case was cool, but kind of bulky and unnecessary. For people that do prefer to lock up their controller though, it was pretty neat to be able to charge it from within the case. I personally would much rather just quickly throw them on wireless chargers though. You get about seven hours on the original controller, but not even six 
on the much more expensive DualSense Edge. In my opinion, you get way more value out of this $70 original controller versus the fancier $200 one. The main new buttons you'll probably use on this controller are these new tabs right here, which will allow you to quickly jump through different customization profiles. And to easily charge these controllers, we've got the PS5 DualSense charging station. This can charge up to two DualSense or DualSense Edge controllers. Another massive user manual. And then we've got a power brick, a power cable for your power brick, and the actual charging station itself. That's really pretty cool how it basically mimics the PS5 design. Oh, they feel like they're made for each other. Go ahead and plug everything in and hook them up. All right, let's try DualSense first. Charging, nice. DualSense Edge and charging. And yeah, I'd say that was pretty easy. All right, now before we check out the rest of the accessories, we're gonna take a quick look at the actual headset. Feel a new reel, cutting edge performance. Enjoy 4K HDR visuals, a 110 degree field of view, and advanced graphical rendering. Go ahead and open up this tiny little box first. Got our USB-C connection cable, a instruction manual, our fancy little pigtail earbuds, and six extra earpieces. And then this right here is one of our Sense controllers. That thing looks pretty sleek. Apparently the wrist straps are really easy to use. Oh yeah, just like a quick little twist. That's pretty cool. And then we've got our right controller right here. Yeah, these feel very comfortable. A little lighter than I thought they'd be though. And now for the main event, the PSVR2 headset. This thing is gorgeous, but is it comfortable? Attached to it is our massive USB-C cable. We've got this adjustment knob on the top. Really just pull on it and let it conform to your head. And then you use this just to tighten it a little bit more. All right, let's go ahead and try her on. I mean, it does block out light really nicely, but it's very front heavy. As opposed to my Oculus Quest 2 with the Bobo VR headset. Yeah, this still feels a lot more comfortable. There's more pressure on the top of my head and the back of my head. Let me see if the IPD adjustment does anything. The IPD adjustment where the lenses kind of separate from my my face. I guess the lenses were just way too close to my nose, so I was probably bumping into the lenses themselves. Yeah, that feels pretty good actually. Next up, the Logitech G923 racing wheel. Power cable and power adapter, fanboy sticker, an advertisement to get an official gaming rig. This is a lot heavier than I thought it would be. Let's take the little sticker off the logo. This goes to the pedals, that goes to the stick shift. These are your little clamps right here on the side. That feels real nice. And then we've got the pedals. That's pretty heavy too. They basically have the exact same amount of resistance as an actual car. And based on the weight alone of both of these, it definitely gives you at least the impression that they're made out of high quality materials. You got your D-pad, your L2, L3, PlayStation buttons, your R2, another knob. Oh my gosh, wow. Maybe I should have had a sister brake on. I'll admit I'm not really good at driving simulation games, but I feel pretty awesome right now. Oh yeah. So after all of the playing that I did, I mean testing that I did, I've come to the conclusion that a racing wheel is a must have for those of you that love racing simulations like Gran Turismo 7. That true force feedback is an absolute game changer and paired with a PSVR 2 headset, I can safely say that this is the most realistic thing that I've ever experienced when it came to a racing simulation. Honestly, the only thing that was missing was the G-Force and I'm really not sure how we're ever gonna achieve that. But if $400 is too steep for you, you can also get the nearly identical G29 for $100 less. That version just doesn't have the true force feedback, a dual clutch system, or the upgraded brake pedal. Next, we have the three Sony H series headphones. The H3 for $80, H7 for $200, and H9 for $280. Quite a few features are shared by all three headsets. All three work with PC and the PS5, have a flip to mute function, external volume controls, and when using it on the PC, all three have extra customizability for personalized sound through the in-zone hub software. Although it did not seem to to work for me when testing the H3. And all three were very comfortable and had nearly the perfect tension. At least they did for my large head. I did find the premium leather-like material on the H9 to feel a bit better against my skin though. Oh yeah, that's the spot. The padding on all of them also adapted very well with glasses and fit on top the PSVR2 headset pretty comfortably as well. They all also collectively have access to a feature that connects to an app which takes pictures of your ears for personalized sound profiles. 
You just done gave Big Pharma access to your private ear data. The H3 is wired, and it's the bare minimum that I would recommend for gaming. It actually sounded louder than the H7 and H9, but it did not sound that good. Those earbuds that came with the PSVR 2, those sounded better than this in my opinion. However, the H7 and H9 sounded amazing. Excellent clarity and satisfying bass. The main differences between the two, the H9 has noise canceling, which can help block out your crying baby or your wife calling for help, and also an ambient mode that does the opposite. Opposite. That mode actually pushes the audio in your room through the headset so that you can hear everything that's happening around you. You get 40 hours on the H7 and 32 on the H9, but only 20 if you use noise canceling. You could use them indefinitely if you use their USB-C cable, but honestly, they charge so quick that I don't think that's going to be an issue. With only a 10-minute charge, you get nearly one hour of wireless use. Both of them can also be simultaneously connected to Bluetooth while being used with the PS5 or your PC, meaning you can answer a call on your phone without having to pause the audio in your game, or maybe listening to music on your phone while gaming. Both of these also have a game chat volume rocker for fine tuning your preferred balance between game sounds and smack talk from 10 year olds. <laughs> The only downside for these two though, for some people, is that there's no analog aux support. It's USB and Bluetooth only. Next up, the Pulse 3D wireless headset. It's got two dual microphones and a wireless adapter that works with a PS5 and PC. We've got a safety and support guide, which I'm never gonna read, and your quick start guide, showing you where to plug it in on the PS5 for power and charging, and where to plug in that adapter for wireless audio. And then on the back of that, it looks like we've got a bunch of information showing you all the different controls and what they can do. And there's your dingle dangle dongle. Got a USB power cable and a standard three and a half millimeter cable. And now for the headset in all its glory. Whoa, that is a lot of buttons on the left earpiece. We've got a microphone, power button, audio input jack, USB-C charge port, your mute button, your volume rocker, your mic monitor for controlling your own voice, and your chat and game switch. And then one more microphone on the other side. I found this headset to have pretty decent sounding audio. Much better than the H3 and just barely below the H7. Unfortunately, they don't have Bluetooth and the battery life was significantly lower in only 12 hours. And because it doesn't have a boom mic like the H series, you couldn't hear your voice nearly as well, even with its mic monitoring feature turned on. Unlike like the H7 and H9 though, it actually does have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And for some reason, it's the only headset that allows you to access the EQ presets within the PS5 itself. If you want the best value at only $100, you don't need to hear yourself that clearly during gaming and are okay with only 12 hours of battery life, I would definitely go with this one. Next up, the PlayStation VR2 Sense controller charging station. little user manual, a little wireless charging nubs. That looks pretty futuristic. Let's go ahead and attach our nubs. And now hopefully even better than that, an all-in-one charger and stand for everything with wireless charging for two PS5 controllers and two PSVR2 controllers. This works with both the PS5 disc edition and the digital edition. It also triples as a cooling charging stand with three different fan speeds. some Velcro cable ties, and then the main base for your stand. Go ahead and click on our little PSVR2 holder. You can see we've got little USB-C magnet nubs for our charging. We've got one for each controller and then one extra. And then we've got this fancy little screw right here, which we're gonna use to secure the PS5 to the base. Actually, first I need to take the little screw cover off the PS5. And then you can actually connect it to your PS5 to give it power. That's pretty cool. Next up, the PSVR2 silicone case, or as this off-brand likes to call it, the PVR2 silicone case. And it also looks like they gave us some pretty weird looking thumbstick caps. And lastly, something I got from Amazon to protect and carry all of this, a PSVR2 carrying case. first. Then we got a little microfiber cleaning cloth, two Velcro cable ties. It was pretty snug in there. 
Yeah, I'd say that's pretty secure. Let's put on the little shoulder strap, try that out. Got my little man purse now. Hey ladies, wanna go play some VR? Oh my gosh. Ah. Oh my gosh. I'm out of ammo. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Boom. Line up the green dots. Interception. I am uh, playing Dak Prescott. Wow. Oh my gosh. This environment is just crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh. Oh my gosh. It's a little delayed shatter effect. Launcher. That was incredible. Cool. I love this game. It's even better on this headset than the Meta Quest. This is the most beautiful thing that I've ever experienced in a game. I feel like the physics on this game are just top notch. This is honestly some good therapy. Whoa, there's some Z fighting there. That almost looked cool. Welcome to the jungle, trophy earned. But I mean, this is just incredible. I don't understand how a console can render this much vegetation. Oh my gosh. I'm completely immersed right now. I don't even feel like I'm in my bedroom. To consume! And that was the jungle. I am incredibly impressed. This is the most realistic game that I've ever played in my entire life. Do not play this level right after eating. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, if you get seasick, that's this is the most seasick inducing game that I've ever played. Got a lighthouse up there. This is actually kind of scary. I feel like I might get electrocuted. Hurry back to the cave. So my overall top cons for the PSVR 2, number one is the games. It's very disappointing that none of the PSVR 1 games are backwards compatible with the PSVR 2 at launch. So right now there's very few games that you can actually play with the PSVR 2. The MetaQuest 2 on the other hand has a massive library on their platform. And with a link cable, an even more massive library of PC VR games. And once you connect it to a super fast gaming PC, you also have the ability to tap into much better graphics than the PSVR 2 is capable of on the PS5. 
5. And number two is the price. Yes, it is a pretty amazing piece of tech, but it's going to cost you more than a PS5. And together with a PS5, it'll run you $1,000, as opposed to $400 for the MetaQuest 2. And number three were the earbuds. I just felt like the included earbuds were just subpar compared to the quality of what you got from the PSVR 2 headset itself. The Sony Pulse 3D headphones and the H7 and H9s paired with it provided an excellent audio experience though. I did notice some distortion with the microphone on all of them except for the H9 headphones. That's honestly for everybody else though is you're really not going to hear your own voice loud enough to notice it. Now my overall top pros, number one is the graphics. Games can be optimized and fine-tuned extremely well on the PS5. There's so many different factors and variations when it comes to VR on a PC that games just really cannot be as optimized when it comes to PC VR. This allows VR on the PS5 to look incredible, even compared to much more expensive and much faster gaming PCs. Horizon Call of the Mountain and Kayak VR are both by far the most amazing experiences that I've ever had in VR. And part of that was due to my number two pro, the display. This OLED display was absolutely beautiful. And the resolution was so sharp that you almost did not recognize any pixels in gaming. And because it's OLED, when things are black, they're 100% black. Unlike the LED displays on other VR headsets where you get a bit of a glow around bright areas with a high contrast, darker background. The only downside to OLED displays with VR is that sometimes in darker environments, you get what people have labeled the Mura effect, which essentially looks like a film grain texture over darker areas. And my number three pro, immersion. I have never felt more immersed with VR than I have with the PSVR 2. The headset and controller vibrations, the super high res and vibrant screen, amazing graphics because of the PS5, and the large field of view and haptic feedback truly made me forget that I was in virtual reality. That haptic force feedback is a game changer if you like first person shooters. Overall, I'd say that the PSVR 2 is an excellent VR headset. And when it comes to the quality of the headset and overall immersion, it's better in every way than the MetaQuest 2. But honestly, it's hard to recommend it right now over the MetaQuest 2, considering how expensive the headset is and how few games there are available for it. Click here if you'd like to see my full review for the MetaQuest 2 and all of its accessories. Only time will tell how worth it the PSVR 2 will be. But right now, if you don't already have a PS5, then I would go with the Quest 2, especially if you already have a super advanced gaming PC to connect it to for better graphics. Unfortunately, you cannot connect a PSVR 2 to a PC. Now, if you do decide to purchase anything that I've talked about in this video, then please remember to use my affiliate links in the comments and description below, as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. And it's actually a major factor in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with that, as well as staying up to date with all of my latest tech. I'd also like to personally thank all my members for their monthly contribution to this channel. I really appreciate you guys. Every little bit helps. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.